Hey everyone, welcome to the RC Flight School. This is episode one. Uh, we got a lot of ground to cover today. The, we're gonna start off with uh, some introductions to begin with. Then we're gonna talk about a little bit of what this RC Flight School is all about. So to start with, uh, my name is Brian. I'm gonna be the host of uh, the RC Flight School. Um, I've had been flying for about uh, eight or nine years now. And I'm really excited to take all the knowledge that I have learned in flying RC aircraft and kind of take that and transfer it over here to our student, Logan, who's going to be learning uh, through a ground school program, learning how to fly in real flight and learning how to uh, fly this Habu jet. We're going to be using this Habu in real flight and we're going to be using this with our Horizon instructor at the, uh, the airfield. And uh, really, aviation has been a big part of my life, uh, really, since I was a kid. I think my first airplane ride was maybe when I was only a few months old. Uh, both my grandparents flew. My dad is, uh, has a, is a private pilot. And um, I even, even I have a few hours logged in my uh, logbook. But um, uh, the flying full scale wasn't in the cards for me. But luckily, I've been able to fly remote control aircraft. I got a pretty good size hangar of uh, aircraft already and really excited to pass that knowledge along to uh, to Logan here, who's gonna be our student. So Logan, why don't you uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself here? Well, I'm Logan, um, I'm 14 and I'm in eighth grade right now, going, and I'm going to be going into high school later this year. I've loved planes and cars all my life. My grandpa was a pilot and so was my great grandpa. And I'm really excited to be doing this and I think it's gonna be really fun and educational. Yeah, and you have an uh, interest in uh, STEM and robotics as well, correct? Yeah, I do STEM and robotics at school. And Great. Well, this will definitely help um, give you a lot of the uh, kind of some additional knowledge when it comes to uh, STEM and robotics. Uh, uh, the flight instructor we'll be uh, using uh, is also into uh, the STEM and the robotics program. And so there's a lot of carryover between what you're going to be learning here in remote control aircraft and some of the sciences that you'll be learning at school. So... Uh, what is the RC Flight School? Let's go ahead and uh, kind of talk about that to begin with before we really start getting into ground school. So RC Flight School is a video series that's dedicated to taking students, our student here, Logan, uh, and you have little to no flight experience already. Uh, a couple of flights on a buddy box uh, yeah. uh, over a year ago has been it. So we're going to take a student with you know basically no flight experience and we're going to teach them the basics of flying uh, through uh, ground school, through real flight uh, as a simulator, working with a Horizon instructor, flying the Habu jet here, and all the way until uh, he can solo the aircraft. In this video series, we'll be documenting each one of those, those steps. Uh, so by all means, please subscribe to uh, the BRGT350 YouTube page here, as well as to this playlist, because uh, we'll be having updates that go on as you will be able to follow along as Logan here is going to learn how to fly this Habu jet. And then it's not just the Habu that he'll be learning about. He'll be learning about the basic principles of flight. And that's where we are going to start off uh, today is the basic principles. So uh, to start with, I want to talk about um, the parts of the aircraft and how lift is generated. Um, I think there's a lot of pilots who may not know the basics on what the parts of the aircraft are. And this really is about just teaching you the vocabulary. So you become more comfortable with talking about the aircraft and when somebody is talking to you about airplanes, you have a better, a little mm -hmm. better knowledge as well. So we'll go ahead, we're going to use this Habu as much as possible uh, to kind of demonstrate the pieces and parts of the aircraft. Uh, we will be bringing in some different aircraft here and there as we move through it. But for the most part, I want to focus on trying to use this as much as we can. So uh, a couple of the terms, uh, so we're all familiar with it. Um, the first one I want to talk about is the fuselage. And the fuselage is this the uh, this long center section here of the aircraft. It's uh, where the, the pilot is, is located. Uh, the motor is located. Now, if this was a prop plane, the motor would be in up front here. Um, but this being a jet, the motor is in the back. But the fuselage is like what we consider the main structure of the aircraft. Think mm -hmm. of an airliner, you sit in the in the fuselage. Um, the cockpit is where the uh, the pilot sits. Mm -hmm. uh, what's nice about this Habu is actually, as you pointed out, it's actually got a dude in there. Yeah. It's got a pilot. Uh, in here as well. And the pilot sits in the cockpit and the enclosure over the cockpit is known as the, the canopy. Mm -hmm. uh, from there back we have um, we have the air intakes which are unique to a, to a jet. Um, if it was a prop plane you wouldn't obviously have this but we have air intakes on the side. We have wings and wings is going to be uh, where we're going to spend a lot of our time talking with today because that's really what makes the airplane fly. It's this, this structure 
um, known as the wing, and the shape of that wing, it really has to do with what gets this from sitting on the ground to in the air. Moving back, we have the vertical stabilator, and that's vertical, obviously, straight up and down, and that houses the, uh, the rudder. And we have the horizontal stabilator, which runs, obviously, horizontal, and that houses the elevator. The wings uh, house the ailerons on the outer edge, and if this aircraft was equipped with flaps, they would be mounted uh, kind of inboard. So those are kind of the main pieces. Uh, underneath, we have the landing gear. This is known as a tricycle landing gear. Uh, it's got two wheels over the wings and one up on the nose. And the nose gear, we call it the nose gear because it's on the nose of the airplane. Mm -hmm. And this is the tail of the aircraft is in, is in the back. So now you get a little bit more familiarity with some of the terms that we talk about. Uh, when I say, hey, Logan, um, where's the nose of the airplane? It's at the front. It's at the front. And where's the tail of the airplane? At the back. At the back. Where's the rudder? Right there. Right there, <laughs> exactly. The rudder's on the back. And so we're going to get into a little more detail on exactly what all those pieces of parts do. But now you're at least familiar when we talk mm -hmm. about uh, what, the, what the rudder does, the aileron, the elevator, mm -hmm. all the different pieces and parts. At least you have some sort of an idea. For, even if this was a prop plane, you'd be talking about pretty much the exact same pieces. Um, this is a jet, so it's a little bit different here and there, but fuselage, canopy, cockpit, nose, tail, vertical, horizontal, stabilator, wings, they're all going to be the same. Those are the mm -hmm. basic parts of an aircraft. Yes, there are way more parts and pieces to that, and they change depending on the type of aircraft, but this school is all about teaching the basics. This isn't, this isn't a, uh, a master's course in, in, uh, in aviation by any means or aeronautical engineering. This is to teach you the basics. So, all right, uh, moving on from there, I want to talk into uh, why airplanes fly, because I think it's important that people know why an airplane flies. Um, and that really boils down to a, um, to a guy by the name of Bernoulli and his principle. And Bernoulli discovered that um, if we take this shape here, Let's put another one on top of it. So you have this kind of, this curve here and you have a curve on top and you're going to pass a liquid. Um, in this case, it's going to be air, but it can mm -hmm. be exactly the same. I mean, air behaves like a liquid, right? So uh, what Bernoulli discovered is that if air goes through or a liquid goes through this, this thin area, this compressed area, if there was one on top. So imagine that there's a mirror image of it. Mm -hmm. It passes through this area. We call that a venturi. And a venturi is very popular, like in a carburetor for a car, yeah. instance, has venturi. And what that does is he discovered that air comes in, and it reaches this area, and it gets compressed. And as it gets compressed, it needs to speed up, because it's got um, fluid moving on the bottom, and it wants to meet up with its buddy at the tail here, and it's got longer distance to go, right? Mm -hmm. So it needs to speed up through this compressed area, and then it starts to slow back down again as it gets here. But as it moves through here, it changes in pressure. The pressure on top is different than the pressure on bottom. So if we remove the imaginary top half of our venturi here, we look at just this shape here. This is called an airfoil. Mm -hmm. It's actually a, a chunk of a, a vintage propeller, uh, but it's a perfect airfoil shape. If we take that and we say, this is now attached to an airplane and the airplane is moving through the air and you have air that moves over the top air that moves over the bottom and the air wants to meet back up again. So it comes in, it expands, the top has to go faster because it has more distance to travel. And when it meets the back, it wants to be right back mm -hmm. together with its buddy that was on the bottom. So really what happens is, is that pressure differential sucks the airplane into the air. And so that's really why airplanes fly. And of course, the faster you go, the more air moves over the top at a higher rate, which produces more lift. Um, there's also a few other elements I want to talk about. So this curvature that you see here, mm -hmm. this curvature is known as, as camber. Now you, there's camber in car, yeah. which is a, a, an alignment setting that's totally different than camber in an airplane. The camber in an airplane is this shape on top. So uh, the more curvature, so the, the more camber that exists, the more lift it will produce at a lower speed. So if we're block, talking about something like a Piper Cub, and it can take off at a low speed, it flies at low speed, takes off in a short distance. It's got a lot of this camber, this curvature to the wing. If you talk at, look at something like an airliner, it looks like it's got like paper thin wings or like an F-14 Tomcat or an F-16, like a modern fighter jet, right? Very thin wings. Well, it needs way more speed in order to produce enough lift to get into the air. So 
Camber is very important. So if you look at an airplane and it's got a huge cambered wing, you know that it's gonna produce a lot of lift and it's gonna produce that at a lower speed. The Habu has actually got quite a bit of camber in the wing, which means at low speed, it's gonna uh, produce enough lift to get into the air. A typical EDF jet like this is gonna have very, very thin wings, which means you need to go really, really fast. And the faster you go, the faster your reaction speed, or reaction time needs to be, get to be ahead of the airplanes, much more complicated to fly. They designed this airplane with a thick enough wing that Logan here is gonna be able to fly it at a low speed, and it's gonna produce enough lift where the plane is gonna be flying okay. And the reason why it can do that is because not only is the wing area large, but it's got a fair amount of, of camber in there as well. So another one of the terms I wanna talk about is called cord length. Mm -hmm. And so from basically the, uh, the leading edge, this is the leading edge, this is the trailing edge, right? So if we position it the same as the airplane is here, the trailing edge is the, is the back of the wing and your mm -hmm. leading edge is the, uh, the front of the wing, okay? And the cord line is an imaginary line that goes from the, um, from the center of the, uh, of the curve here to the center of the curve back here. So it goes just straight through here, right? Mm -hmm. You say, well, what's really important about that? Why do I need to know that? Well, the center of gravity, which is important because the center of gravity is where all the forces of the airplane pass through. We're gonna talk about that just in a few more minutes here. Um, it's roughly about a third the way back of on the wing, on the cord line, is approximately where the center of gravity exists. Mm -hmm. If the center of gravity is back here, the airplane is, is going to be too tail heavy and it's going to want to pitch up like this. And if it's too nose heavy, which means the center of gravity is this way, the airplane is going to want to pitch down. Now, uh, last thing I want to talk about uh, when it comes to this is called angle of attack. Okay? Mm -hmm. Angle of attack is, imagine that, that cord line, right? You have a cord line. And we have, let's say, the, um, we're just going to call it uh, earth, like a flat line mm -hmm. at the bottom. So as the wing gets higher, so we'll just kind of imagine this. Let's, let's do this. Here we go. So the airplane's flying straight and level. The cord line and the, and the kind of the earth is lined up as one here, all right? Now you start pitching the airplane up comes up, well, the cord line moves with the wing, right? Well, look at mm -hmm. the angle between the white piece of paper and, and, the, um, and the cord line. It starts to g get bigger. That is known as the angle of attack. And what's important about the angle of attack is when the aircraft begins to pitch up, it's gonna climb, right? Well, there becomes a point in time in which if you do not have enough airspeed and your angle of attack becomes too great, the aircraft begins to stall. And when you say, when I say stall, what do you normally think of when I say stall? I think of like someone trying to learn to, how to drive a manual transmission <laughs> car for the first time. But like an engine stall, right? Yeah. Well, an engine stall is totally different than an aerodynamic stall. There, in fact, I've heard, I've even heard the, like people on the news get that completely wrong. An aerodynamic stall does not mean mm. the engine stops running. Stalling your car means that. So as the angle of attack starts to get higher and you don't have enough airspeed to kind of lift, take off like this way, you start kind of like pushing through the air like this and the air begins to spiral behind. Mm -hmm. It's not moving nice and smooth. It's beginning to kind of do curly cues. And when that happens, it's not meeting up with the air on the bottom. You're not producing lift. The airplane begins to kind of waffle around a little bit and you no longer produce lift. When the airplane stalls, it's going to pitch over and start to, uh, to head towards the ground. Left unchecked, the airplane will continue on that path all the way until it hits the ground and, and is destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, so the reason why I wanna bring up stall is because so many RC pilots stall their aircraft and you stall from having too high of an angle of attack, too high of an angle of attack, too low a speed. So you're fighting against the forces of gravity you do not have enough thrust coming out the back and the airplane no longer can stay in the air and it just falls out of the sky. That is a very dangerous situation, but it's totally recoverable. You pitch the airplane, pitch the nose down, get the air moving back over the wing again. So the airplane is coming down like this. The air comes in, comes back over again, nice and smooth onto the bottom, nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. And now you can generate lift and pull back out again. So I wanna make sure we cover stall because it is a major problem with a full-scale plane it's a major problem with an rc plane um don't go too slow 
and don't pitch up too high in the nose, you will have a little bit of an issue. So um, we did cover, well, I wanna make sure we, uh, we covered that. So uh, the last couple things I wanna talk about is getting into almost a little bit more physics, all right? Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about um, the major forces that act on the airplane. So as the airplane sits here right now, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna use this as kind of our starting point of forces. As we mentioned before, all the forces pass through what? Yes, through air, from the plane. Through the center, center of gravity. Center of gravity. The center of gravity is approximately a third the way back on the wing, right? So imagine this. Imagine there's like a miniature uh, axis, like an axle that runs through the airplane, through the center of gravity this mm -hmm. way. And that is going to be what we call yaw. Yaw is the turning in this way, right? That's done by an, an, um, an axle, an axis, that goes right through the aircraft, through the center of gravity. There's also one that goes from the nose of the aircraft to the tail of the aircraft, and that axis passes directly through the center of gravity, and that is where our roll axis is. The roll is this way, and roll is done through the, through the ailerons. And the very last one is um, we're going to have the, the axis of pitch, which is up and down. And that also runs through what? Center of gravity. Center of gravity. And that's actually the one that's the most critical when we set a new airplane up is where that center of gravity is at because that's what controls your pitch. If the center of gravity is too far in the back, mm -hmm. you will actually become tail heavy. The aircraft will pitch up violently mm -hmm. and you will stall and the airplane will crash. Better to have a little bit too nose heavy than too tail heavy. Mm -hmm. So those are where all the acts, so imagine there's one, two, three axes, and they all go through a little ball in the middle called the center of gravity, okay? So, passing through each one of these areas, there's gonna be four major forces that we're gonna uh, talk about. The first one is gravity. Gravity is a constant, it's always here. Can't get out of gravity. So gravity is what keeps the airplane sitting here on the ground. Well, nobody wants to have an airplane sitting on the ground, right? Yeah. So what, what are we gonna do to get the airplane in the air? Well, to overcome gravity, the opposite force is lift. Lift is created by aerodynamics, which we talked mm -hmm. about with our buddy Bernoulli and his venturi and airfoil shape here. So lift is the opposite of gravity. When you run out of lift, who do you think is going to win? Gravity. Gravity is going to win, and so the airplane is going to be destroyed. So mm -hmm. uh, the, the other two forces that you're going to need to come into play are thrust and drag. Thrust is what moves the airplane forward through the air. Mm -hmm. um, this one, thrust is generated by EDF unit, electric ducted fan. On a prop plane, it's generated by the propeller. And that's what moves the airplane through the air, which then gets air moving over the wings, which then produces lift. lift. And lift overcomes drag. Gravity. 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 You already beat me too. The very yeah. last one we want to talk about is actually drag. Um, drag is what actually moves the airplane in the opposite direction. So thrust wants to move you forward. Drag is what wants to bring you back down again. And drag is really like, um, let's say this was an A-10, right? Mm -hmm. And we hung a whole bunch of bombs and missiles and crap underneath it, right? It's all dirty with stuff hanging down. Mm -hmm. That all creates drag. The landing gear being down in this habu creates drag. Drag is the opposite of thrust, mm -hmm. so it slows the airplane down. So we have four forces, and they all pass through what? Gravity. Center of gravity. Center of gravity. And the, the one that keeps the airplane on the ground is? Is gravity. Gravity. The one that lifts it up in the air? Is lift. Lift. The one that moves it forward? Thrust. And the one that slows it down? Drag. Drag. You got it. So, all right. So, and one of the reasons why we want to make sure that you understand where all these forces are acting from is because when you are flying the airplane, mm -hmm. they are all acting on the airplane, right? So you need to be thinking ahead of thrust, drag, lift, and you do need to think about gravity because when you forget about it, it will tend to bite you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the big, one of the big takeaways here is the center of gravity is extremely important, both in real flying it's in, in full-scale flying, it's critical in RC flying, it's critical in race cars too. All your forces in your car, all your forces in an airplane, everything passes through 
the center of gravity. And so later in this series, we'll actually balance this airplane and you'll actually see it. It will, it will balance out where it'll be perfectly flat and that's where we find the center of gravity. You don't wanna fly an airplane that's too tail heavy. You don't wanna fly one that's too nose heavy. Um, you really don't have to worry about center of gravity in this direction. It's pretty mm -hmm. well centered, the airplane's symmetrical. But it is absolutely critical to get it positioned this way correctly. Mm -hmm. So, all right, um, that's really the, the main things we wanna cover in episode one. Lo, do you have any questions before we wrap up the very first episode? I don't think I do. All right, well, uh, if you do, you know where to uh, find me. And if you guys got any questions, you know, that you have for us on anything we covered here today, leave them in the comments below. Um, and you can follow along on the BRGT350 YouTube page, Instagram, and uh, Logan, you have social media as well. And how do, we, how do people find you in this? Well, on Instagram, I'm, my name is Speed and Power, and on YouTube, it is Logan S. right now. There you go. So if you guys have any questions for him as a new student pilot, by all means, ask him. But we're going to wrap up episode one. Uh, before we do call it uh, quits on the first one here, um, I do want to thank our friends at Horizon Hobby for making this this um, this series come to life here. They were able to provide us this awesome Habu jet that Logan will be uh, learning on. So special thanks to our friends at uh, Horizon. And if you are interested in buying one of these Habu jets, by all means, visit the uh, Horizon Hobby website uh, or even go down to your local hobby shop. Um, so that's it. If you guys got any questions, leave them below.